Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. Let me give you a little bit more of a wider angle. So today we are going to be making a big hitter. I did talk about it on yesterday's vlog and I've decided to go with an Amarillo IPA and it's going to be a hell of a monster at 7.2% ABV and 70 IBUs. Let's have a walk around and have a look at the ingredients we're going to be using today. We've got 75 kilograms of crushed pale malt. This is extra pale and the variety is Planet. Just look at that lovely, lovely grainy stuff in there. That's right. And then next we've got lager malt, 50 kilograms. And that is also crushed and ready to go in the mash tun. Then over here, we have a few uh, specialty grains. We've got some wheat malt, about three kilograms, and then about half a kilo of dark Cara, or Cara 110, Crystal 110. And that's to give us, hopefully, a nice orange hue. And then uh, we're also gonna be adding four kilograms of dextrose to help us achieve our original gravity and to help with the body or we'll lighten it just a touch uh, we've got some water treatment here some calcium chloride and some calcium sulfate in this jug ready to rock and roll we've got some ans and 80 ml of lactic acid and then over here we're going to be using up the hops that i bought by mistake these are Amarillo leaf and I can't really use leaf in anywhere but the boil So we're going to bag them in net bags today and we're going to be adding. Let's have a look uh -huh. One kilogram of Amarillo for the 60 minute boil and then four kilograms I believe it could be five actually Yeah, four kilograms for a whirlpool for it says 60 minutes on there I'll go and alter it it's for 30 minutes and then we're going to be transferring that bad boy into the fermenter where we'll be adding USO5 and then after fermentation hopefully we get to 7% we'll be looking at adding another uh, what was it let me just look on the recipe because I keep forgetting it's, uh, that's why I've got it in my hand we're going to be adding another three kilograms of Amarillo pellet for the dry hop. So let's, without further ado, get brewing a brew. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what you call a full mash tun. And we've managed to achieve our target temperature of 66 degrees. Obviously, you see a slight fluctuation there of 66.1, even in places. It will be down at 59 but it's relatively homogeneous and I am extremely pleased that we managed to get there actually it was uh, touch and go for a minute so I'll just wash this temperature probe in a second anyway so I've got to set a timer now because we want a, a 60 minute mash but I'm just going to set for 45 minutes before we go in for a vol off of course and then I just want to fill the HLT back up because we've got no sparge water really we used uh, 600 no 320 litres there just about oh 292 excuse me so we put 292 in there so we'll record that we got our 66.0 and we used 298 plus I had to add 20 cold. So there we are. Now what do I need to do? Right, so I normally, when I've got that pipe on, filling the HLT up, I just set a little five minute alarm so I remember to come back and turn it off because in the past I've left that running 
and I filled the HLT up all the way to the top and I can't reheat the water within the 45 minutes mash time that we've got so I have to extend the mash for this to get back up to strike temp which is a ball ache so I'm just going to pull the stirring machine out so I've added 18 mill millilitres of beta gluconase to this as well to help prevent any sticking of the mash and break down any gluconase to allow the runoff and the sparge to go a little bit more smoothly so I better make sure I record that on the brew sheet before I go any further so the technique that we're using for getting the hops into the beer is we're just breaking up the leaf in this bucket and weighing them out and then we're adding them to these um, they're actually for home brew anyway they are natural brew in a bag bags and it's a three pack so this will be perfect for the job and what we're going to do is just drop these into the boil BPA free it's all good isn't it best phenol A is that BPA it's the stuff that they found in the children's plastic, plastic milk bottles, or yeah, yeah, you know, for babies, the the ones with teats on and what have you. And apparently it was a nasty chemical, so they don't put it in anything anymore. Good that they tried it out on babies, of course, though. <laughs> so we've prepared the hops. All of this is the Whirlpool edition, and this is the 60-minute boil. Oh my goodness. Oh, it smells amazing. Imagine sleeping on that. Imagine having that as your pillar. I don't know if that would be good for you, actually. So we started the vol off. And as you can see, we're still a little bit submerged. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Once we get a couple of litres out of the tank, then everything else will just settle slightly. I've stuck the mixer in and it actually feels really nice and fluid down there, not clumpy. So I'm quite hopeful that we're going to achieve the efficiency out of the mash tun that we are looking for. So we've got her on 30% boil power because every now and then she lets us know that she's boiling I'm sure it will erupt before our very eyes if we give it time I think it's down to the concentration of sugars obviously it's really thick inside so we're getting a lot of bubbles and foam and that kind of jazz going on in there we do have anti-foam in and you can see from the drawstring We've also got the 60 minute addition in there, in fact it's had half an hour's boil already. So we're just going to leave this for a little bit longer then we'll start chilling. There we go, look, I see the steam coming out. Sometimes it's a little bit more brutal than that. So yeah, we'll leave it chilling, uh, we'll leave it boiling until we get to, to the chill stage and then we'll try and add the four kilograms or 4.8 kilograms actually of leaf hop for the whirlpool stage we did manage to hit our pre-boil gravity target of around 1056 i think it was so hopefully after the addition of the dextrose we should be up to about 1069 for our post boil which with any luck will give us a seven percent plus beer at the end of it all that is it. Boil is completed. We're bringing the temperature down to 80 degrees. But in order to take advantage of the sanitation of heat, we've already dropped in the Whirlpool Edition hops just to capture, wow, just to capture that heat. Now each of these bags, there are three of them, one was in for 60 minutes and the other two one, big ones have gone in for about half an hour whirlpool. Now they've got a 
RJT fitting in there as well to try and weigh them down but that's not really doing anything. They're slowly going though. Just needs to lose some air. They are slowly sinking. They're going to take some manipulation though unfortunately. Look at that. Come around here you. I have got the whirlpool on so it is blowing through the top and as you can see it's already starting to clear out. The sugar went in no problem at the end of the boil or with a minute to go. And it does look nice and orange doesn't it? So hopefully we do get quite a lot of orange colour and orange flavour to complement that Amarillo style beer. So we're well pulling at a lovely 79.8 degrees and I thought while I'm at it since it's going to be a big beer I've stuck in a little bit of yeast nutrient diammonium phosphate and I've just explained to Gemma what's the difference between DAP and WAP well, Cardi B didn't sing about DAP, did she? I'll leave it to you to Google what she did sing about if you're not familiar with it. Shall we have a look at the Whirlpool? What are you laughing at? Oh, look at that. Aeration and recirculation. I think those hops are getting quite a bit of a drenching, don't you? And that is good to see. We'll leave that lid shut then. Hold on. Use the elbow of power to close it down. Let's go and have a look at exactly what temperature we're recirculating at. That's close enough to 80 for me. And that's reflected over here on the boil temp, so I'm very pleased with those numbers. I am slightly concerned we're going to be a little bit shy on the gravity side now. I've just taken a reading with the refractometer and it was in the high 1050s. We're actually looking for 1065, 1066. So fingers crossed for me boys and girls. Hope we get there. We've got our transfer on, that looks a lot hazier than it actually is. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the mango IPA that we made last year. And here it is. I found a few cans on the side in a box. Let's have a look at her. I'll tell you what, she certainly got the appearance of a beautiful mango IPA. Definitely got a haze in there. Not pouring with half as much trouble as it did when it was originally kegged, or canned even. But that's relatively clear. What it is, is clean of any uh, floaters. It's quite carbonated, but the can didn't feel that hard, to be fair. So when you're brewing a beer, it's the law to have a beer. So cheers to that, boys and girls. Oh. Wow, that's really developed. The mango's a little bit more subtle now. It's um, it's more rounded, which I suppose a lot of beers that have got some age on them would be. That's definitely one to revisit again in the future. It's got a very thick body, really quite a thick body. Anyway. All that's left for me to do, let me go into my yeast fridge, is get out the, excuse me, Brewer's Clarity. We've got a new tub to go at here. We're just using the tail end of this bad boy. And I need to draw 10 mil of that out into a syringe, which I've got over here. Sanitizing in some acid, along with purple tilt and of course my tongs for putting them all into the fermenter. 
Let's go up to the uh, boil kettle and have a look at how our brew in a bag bags are getting on. Well, there they are. They're sat down there. They're looking, oh my God, relatively laden. They weigh an absolute ton. I've stopped thinking about getting these out. How indeed I'm going to do that. But just um, to show you the packaging that these came in, Here's the packaging, look. Brew in a bag. Era Natural. What's this? Three pack, and you've got the dimensions, 22 inches by 26. And look at the description. For casual lovers and beer lovers. What the fuck's that about? Well, I don't like to brag, but there's two bags out. The ingenious method that I've utilized to do this. You know, it wasn't by accident that the diameter of all these tanks are the same. Therefore, the lid for that one will indeed fit this one. So we've just lifted that section up and popped that bit of lid on. And therefore, it's allowed us to rest the whole hop sack and let me tell you now, this weighed probably in excess of 30 kilograms when I lifted it out. So to do that one-handed and manipulate this underneath was a task. I'm on my own now. And then of course I'm just leaving this and you'll probably not see, but it is just, it's just drip drying. And the amount of hoppage, you know, uh, not hoppage, liquid. Look at that. So what I've been using is this uh, stainless steel tray. Just to press it and it's pushed the majority of the liquid out the hops. So we managed to salvage a considerable amount of work that would have otherwise that would have otherwise been lost. HLT's full now, so I'm having to fill buckets, which is a bit of a bummer. Big HLT required, please. Not bad, not too much aftermath there. To be fair, just wash the floor down. This is a big bag of hops, which I'm gonna let cool down before I try even remotely to pick it up and take it anywhere, because it's still about 70 degrees. And it probably weighs 15 kilos, maybe even more, maybe 20. So we're just flushing through the plate chiller now, in fact I'll make sure that's going through the plate chiller and nowhere else and the moment of truth, I've had a sneak peek, I know what we've got Amarillo IPA hopefully 7.2 which means we need to hit the starting gravity of 1059 <laughs> 1065.9 I was doing this yesterday wasn't I and of course that is all dependent on hitting our final gravity of 10.12 or 10.11.9. Let's call it 10.12 for argument's sake. But I think we're going to be in the 7% ballpark, boys and girls, because we have settled out, I think, at 10.63.9. I'm going to go with on that one. 1063.5. I suppose that's as good as I can expect it to be. You can see the 5 mark just coming around now, look. So it might be a little bit higher than 5 actually. Might be 1063.6. I really can't keep still today because I'm at a funny angle. 1060, 61, 62, 63.5. Point six could even be point seven. I'm gonna go with ten sixty three point seven. We want to ten sixty five point nine, which means we're two point two gravity points off. Which isn't bad for a day at the races. So the obligatory sample. I see what she tastes like. Of course it's hoppy and it just smells of amarillo and the colour as well. 
I think it's going to be really nice. Very bitter. Very sweet. Ooh. Now that bitterness has come in to bite you in the arse. Oh, this is going to be a killer. Well, well, time will tell. Time will tell, boys and girls. Right, I've got a small clean-up operation on my hands. Nothing really to worry about. The tank's been inoculated. It's got USO5 in it. It's got the tilt in there. It's got the brewer's clarity. I just need to write down the numbers and then get in the car Oh, set the tank to CIP overnight, then get in the car and uh, tally on home. Because tomorrow, I'm going to do another brew day. Yeah, I think I am actually. And uh, it makes sense because, of course, we've got the hot water from today and we've got two empty tanks. So we'll fill those two empty tanks. Wow. Really, it's quite a good beer, that mango IPA. Did I ever get the recipe on the website? I think I did. So next week, we're going to have to can some beers. We've got no vacant in the shop, but we've got plenty of park and some other things. So get yourselves over there and, you know, help a brewer, help a brewer out and buy some beers direct from the brewery. I might have a play, actually, in the next couple of weeks and change how we supply beers and maybe do ones and twos so you can pick and mix your own boxes of 12 oh that really is nice and then of course through the week we've got to do some work in the beer garden next door to get prepared for summer we've got the spring menu coming out in the brew shed Tom's altered the menu a little bit to give us a small um, bar snacks menu like loaded chips and or loaded fries and you know hot wings and stuff like that that we can eat at the bar without having to seat diners at a table be completely separate to what you get if you sit and dine with us it'll be served like in a box you know those American Chinatown Chinese takeaway kind of boxes and that kind of thing recycled uh, paper boxes or whatever they are We'll be using those kind of things to do these small little little um, bar, they're not snacks, but bar meals. And then if you want to come down and dine and have the full experience, then of course you can book a table and sit down. But we need to get in that beer garden while we've got some fine weather and hit all those benches with the jet wash and I need to also paint the walls. We've inherited terrible walls, but you know, you live with it. And then uh, we should be ready then to start looking at taking the beers that we brewed this week out of tanks so you know lather rinse repeat it doesn't stop folks so anyway i will see you on the next vlog probably tomorrow when i'm brewing something a little bit more run of the mill like the vacant gesture has never been run of the mill we'll see you on the next one boys and girls cheers